Frogway here and it's time for another tutorial and today we are looking at a very powerful feature of Adobe Animate and this is the bones and armature features and inverse kinematics sounds pretty high-tech but it's really really cool so let's get started we're gonna go into Animate we're gonna create an action script 3 file and let's start with that let's go fit in window now up to now we have created simple tweens and a walk cycle and pretty much everything that we have done we have had to draw and uh, there was no real control over how that object moved other than tweening it um, we had no no joint control like you would if you had a like a puppet or something so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to create a bone structure within your objects so that you can actually have uh, jointed or um, you know sort of objects that would move like they would in real life so let's let's start with something simple let's start with something like a uh, I don't know like a snake actually knows more like a centipede I guess but uh, we'll take the rectangle tool and I'm going to just create um, a rectangle with it doesn't really matter what color I give it here uh, let's go with yellowish orange I'm gonna just put a block right here okay so I've got a block really nothing too fancy just a block of color so I'm going to select that and the important thing here is that everything that's going to be connected and you know built with bones we're going to convert it to a symbol it has to be a symbol and I prefer to always make it a movie clip so I'm gonna call this um, joint one I don't know if that's a real good description but okay so we now have this first piece of what potentially could be an object that is way more complicated I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit now what we want to do is we want to create a complicated object now let's pretend this was a piece of a snake or maybe a long chain that was hanging down what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my library and I'm gonna create the next joint for this object okay actually there's an easier way to do that I'm gonna delete that this is a nice little trick in all Adobe pro programs that you can hold the option key okay and I believe on the PC it's the alt key but uh, holding the option key you can slide a copy down so what I'm doing is I'm sliding copies down and I'm going to the middle of the previous joint piece now just so you can see what I'm doing because it's kinda hard to to see I'm gonna just put a stroke on the first piece here so you can see whoops yeah I'll just put a I'll put a line on it so that you guys can see what I'm doing here so there we go now you can see that overlap I'm holding option and I am sliding the next copy down so I've got quite a few copies there and they're all just overlapping one another like that okay does that hopefully that makes sense okay now let's say this was a chain or a snake or whatever these would be the segments of the chain the links of chain or maybe the segments of the body of whatever we're, we're making now let's say we want them to act as one object and each of these are pivot points for uh, something we may be animating there's a tool and it is right here it's the bone tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the bone tool I'm going to click the first object I'm clicking and dragging and you notice this purple line that comes out of it I'm going to drop that purple line somewhere in the second object and what it has done is it has linked those two together then I'm going to drag down and I'm probably over the third object underneath right now and the fourth and the fifth, sixth, 
7th and 8th. Okay? So all I did there is I just clicked, drag, click, drag, click, drag, so that my bone went over each piece of uh, the, the uh, joints that we had created originally. Now that's not very impressive, and you may be wondering why the heck I did that. Well, watch what happens now. If I take this last purple dot and I move it, oh, magically, our object now is linked together with a system of bones. Okay, the joint that we created here can now pivot just like it would on a real, in this case, a snake or uh, it could have, like I said, it could be a hanging chain or a rope or whatever. It pivots as it would in real life or at least <laughs> a heck of a lot more real than most things that we would animate, you know, if we were trying to do it frame by frame. Now, check this out, because I think this is pretty cool too. Let's say we have this object somewhere off to the left side. We pivot it off to the left side somewhere here, something like that. And now we want to animate <clears throat> maybe this object swinging. Let's go to frame 10. Oh, and by the way, very, very important, something I almost missed here. <clears throat> when you start linking your objects, you end up with an armature layer. And the armature is basically telling you that this layer contains those linked objects that you can animate or you can do whatever you want with afterwards. So on that layer, <clears throat> we're going to go to frame 10. I'm going to insert a pose. Okay, it's not a keyframe anymore. It's a pose. Basically what it's asking us to do is repose our object. So now I'm maybe in the middle. And then maybe I'll go another 10 frames up to 20, insert pose, and maybe now it has swung over to this side. And now watch, it animates all the frames in between for us, just like a tween, except now we have a lot more control over how that object is going to swing. Now one thing I forgot to mention or didn't show is that I can grab any of these points doesn't have to be the last point. I can grab any of these joints that I've created. And I, whoa, <laughs> sometimes it kind of goes, whoa, sometimes it goes really glitchy. Um, but the fact that we have that kind of control uh, gives us a lot of power over how this is going to animate in the future. All right. So that's the first kind of basic demonstration of how to use bones and joints. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to open up my file here called Character New. And inside here, I'm going to show you how this could actually apply to a character that you may create. And I've created this file <clears throat> broken into the pieces that are very important to create a character with an armature built into him. Okay, so like I like I'm trying to say here or trying to show, you need to split your character into these pieces if you want him to correctly link together in an armature. And uh, first step, <clears throat> we need to convert the separate pieces into movie clips. So I'm going to start with the head. And I'm going to convert it to a symbol. We need to make sure. I, I like using movie clips. It will work with graphics as well. I'm going to call this head. And then I'm going to select the next piece. Convert to symbol. Upper arm L for left. And convert to symbol. Lower arm left and convert to symbol hand left 
Now we move over to the right side, convert to symbol, upper arm right, convert to symbol, Lo whoops, lower arm right, convert to symbol, hand right. Okay, now we do the middle pieces. So, it's kind of repetitive. I apologize. Convert to symbol, torso. Convert to symbol, waist. Convert to symbol, upper leg left. Lower leg left. Uh, foot left. Oops. By the way, uh, these source files can be downloaded in the description below. Upper leg right. Lower leg right. And, oops. Foot right. Okay, so that was painful, but uh, <laughs> we've got all the pieces now converted to movie clips. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch into outline mode. All right, and the way you do that is in your layer, you see this little blue block. I'm going to switch into outline so I can actually see the outlines of this character. I like to call this blueprint mode. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the pieces in. Okay, so they overlap the other pieces. Okay, so for example, I'm moving the arm into the joint, the shoulder joint. Looks like... Uh, it's like we missed a piece there. Kind of weird. Yeah, totally did. I'll just delete that. My bad. Move that into the shoulder joint. Take the lower arm, overlap it with the upper arm. Take the hand, overlap it with the lower arm. Same with here. And the reason we're doing this in outline mode is it's way more accurate because it's very confusing when you look at it in regular view um, it's so much easier to see it in in outlines to see where your objects are overlapping whoops I missed the waist the waist has to come up too now the legs wow this guy's got long arms I think he's like a Neanderthal <laughs> bringing that all up overlapping it a little bit nicely just like so. And I try to make it as even as possible because it's going to animate better that way. Now if I go out of outline mode, he kind of looks right. Okay, but it's it's hard to see. Uh, in this view, you can get a much better sense of how it's overlapping. Now, with the bone tool, it's very important, at least in my opinion, it's very important um, how you start this armature. When I'm doing a character, I like to start in the center of the torso between the shoulders, okay? So somewhere around here. And I'm going to start by dragging up to the bottom of the neck. Oops. And I just realized something. Sorry. I cannot build an armature in outline mode. Okay, so I have to do this now outside of this view. Okay, so my first link is between the torso and the neck. And my next link, the way I can do this, I can make multiple links off of one point, is I'm going to click this red anchor, and I'm going to drag a bone towards the left shoulder. I'm going to do the same thing, click and drag a bone to the right shoulder. From here, 
I can now drag a bone to the lower arm and drag a bone to the hand. Once again, right, uh, right hand side, lower arm, and hand. In the middle, it gets a little tricky. Well, it's not tricky, but we're going to drag down to the waist object, which is somewhere here. And then I'm going to split to the upper leg and to the other upper leg over here. I'm going to split down to the lower leg and the foot. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to drag down to, whoops, I hate that snap. I have to turn off that snap, but for, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to do it this way. And to the foot. There we go. Now he's all linked up correctly now. All right, and you may notice some weird things like his feet may not, shouldn't be in front necessarily. Definitely not his upper legs. That looks really strange. So what we can do is I can just click that symbol and send it to the back. And I can do the same for this one. Send it to the back. So that looks a little bit better. But the cool thing now is with this character, I can grab any of these bones and his whole structure, okay, moves just like it would on an actual person, okay? So his structure now, so actually he's more like a, I would say more like a puppet. <laughs> but you get a sense now that with this all linked up, doing complicated animations, doing things that might have been very difficult to draw frame by frame, is much, much simpler with an armature in place. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to just reset him back to how he was before I started moving him. Start him with his hands down. <clears throat> I'm going to just go up to about frame 10 and insert a pose. I'm going to have him raise his hand in that time, something like that. So in that amount of time, he raises his hand. Then by frame, let's say 15, we'll insert a pose. Let's say he bends his hand like this. And in frame 20, we insert a pose. His hand comes back. Maybe by frame 25, we insert a pose, and it goes back again. So I'm, I'm trying to make them wave, is what I'm trying to show you here. Now you can see it's not perfect. Okay, we got some issues that we can fix up. But in a very, very short amount of time, I created something that would have taken a heck of a lot longer to do frame by frame or traditionally compared to doing it this way. So bones and armature are super powerful. You can create complicated characters that can do complicated animations in a relatively short amount of time. And depending on how much complexity you want to add to this, you can make them very simple or you can make them very complicated and you can get some very complicated bone structures in some of your objects. For a human, like this character, this is kind of the standard bone structure. This is what you should always do for your human characters. Okay, center point, neck, splitting to left and right shoulder, down to waist, splitting to legs, and the rest follows, just like in a human body. All right, so you get the idea. I hope that was um, informative. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys use this in your projects.